All right, guys, this is Granite Street. We're just walking down. So maybe it's a good time to talk about uh, some of the things that I haven't talked about uh, before. First of all, let's talk about Christina. Nelson had a very special relationship with her. Like he used to check up on her all the time, go visit her. I imagine it must have been pretty hard back in the 80s transitioning. You know, it was a very raw concept back then. And I'm glad that Nelson was always there for her. And uh, you could see from his videos, he was clearly upset when she passed away. He mentions about her at least three or four times. Uh, there was once when he was going to a road trip with the club kids. He mentions her there and then uh, I think there was a phone conversation with uh, Michael Musto. He mentions her there and also when he does the mock video of his cable show he dedicates the first episode to Christina I think this is Granite Street should really look at the map before I start walking but I think I'm walking in the right direction anyways um, so um, the other thing I wanted to share is what I learned from Nelson's videos. I know a lot of people saw him as a fun guy who was always at these fancy parties. But to me, he was a guy who was working really hard. You know, it wasn't easy walking around with that huge camera, but he took it to every party he went to because he was collecting content for his cable show. And also, at the age of 41, he decided to leave his stable job and pursue a career that he really wanted to that he was passionate about a lot of us don't have the courage to do so and we are expected to be pretty much stable by the time we reach 30 so he had everything going on like he was working hard for it he had the vision he had the persistence but he ran out of time So that's the lesson you can take that you know whatever you have to do just go for it don't work wait for it because time never waits for anyone now let's talk about RuPaul often when we often when we speak about celebrities or think about it we wish that we could have their lifestyle if we could have everything they have but the thing is you can if you're willing to work hard and Nelson's videos is a very good documentation or documentary of the struggles that RuPaul had to go through before he reached where he is today it wasn't easy there was one video where some homophobics say to him that he's a disgrace to mankind and then another video where he talks about where he talks about uh, how men misbehave with her at the shows but uh, but he had to do it because he had to you know break through the industry And also like uh, when he came to New York he tried it out for a while didn't work so went back to Atlanta and then came back to New York so even there you could see the hustle and now he's one of the top celebrities one of the top drag queens in the world everyone knows him well I didn't know him before I stumbled upon Nelson's video but now I know him The other person I wanted to talk talk about is uh, Michael Eilig. I think I'm on the wrong street, but we'll keep walking down. Oh, this is Washington Street. Jeez. 
but I think it runs parallel to Granite Street so we should be okay maybe I should uh, check on my phone is there anything coming? now I can cross yeah the other person I wanted to talk about is uh, Michael Ailey I know he doesn't have a good reputation but he started off pretty well he was a small town boy who came to New York and after Andy Warhol passed away he saw the opportunity and uh, really went for it and even made it but as quickly as he rose the downfall came straight after but I guess that's uh, part and parcel of uh, that kind of industry and you know they were dealing with drugs so that was bound to happen but he did start pretty well I must say he was pretty good at what he did and the way Nelson used to talk about it you could you could tell that he obviously admired Michael Ailey a lot and also, you know, like Nelson knew that the club kids would be the next big thing. So he needed to associate with them so that he could uh, have the best uh, content for his show. I really hope I end up into Charles Street because I know he did go past Charles Street in his last video Charles Street and Charles Lane oh this is Charles Lane right here jeez for once I made it Remember Nelson stood here and said what a beautiful lane it was and I'm kind of surprised because it still looks the same or even worse there's grass growing in between the stones so yeah that's Charles Lane in his last video I don't know if you guys noticed or not but he wanted to like you know, all of a sudden wanted to show everything about uh, what he loved. I don't know, maybe I'm just romanticizing it. You know, like if he didn't pass away, then it wouldn't mean anything. But just because that was his last video and he was like uh, talking about all these places, it kind of, it kind of felt like it meant something. But yeah, he loved this lane. He did say what a beautiful lane it was. Okay, let's move on to Charles Street. Okay, I think I should grab some food as well. I haven't eaten yet. So today is my last day here in New York. And I have to do a couple other things. I want to go down to Ground Zero, where that 9/11 event happened. Not the event, incident, or oh, event. You know what I mean. And uh, and then after that, I want to go and catch the free ferry to Staten Island to see the lady the famous lady of New York and also after that I want to go up to Brooklyn Bridge and hopefully Dumbo so that's a lot of things to do in one day building right there the white one that looks new because uh, in Nelson's video it was the Pathfinder mural like they had uh, 
the wall with all the murals on it and it was it was a brown brick something like that or maybe it was the other side you know i sometimes wonder what nelson would have to say if he was still around to see everything that's changed but I think he'd be pretty okay with it. He was a guy who moved according to time and he adapted pretty quickly. Well, if anything, he was so much ahead of time, like vlogging in 1989. That is insane, that is pure genius. Also, I went and reviewed the footage of uh, Nelson's house that I took yesterday and pretty disappointing, nothing came out well because I was supervised the entire time and they kept talking to me, I guess they didn't want me to take a lot of footage because they had stuff everywhere obviously it's an art gallery so they wanted to be presented uh, better than that but we all understand, don't we? I'll try to salvage whatever I have but yeah that was pretty deflating for me because that was supposed to be the main event and um, we need to press a button maybe not yeah so that was the main event for me and um, I went there and uh, if anything uh, I have the least footage of Nelson's house than anything else that I covered but I guess it's okay you know sometimes it doesn't go your own way you just need to improvise so this is West Street and I'm wondering if this should be called a street because it's a highway maybe in the US it's just uh, named differently but it's pretty busy like that's Charles Street nice and quiet that's how a street should be Okay. I remember Nelson used to just cross without looking back then. It never used to be this busy. So we are walking towards Hudson River. And uh, you have to look out for cyclists because they come from both the ways. You know, I kind of found it out the hard way. Yesterday I was about to get bumped by one. How much everything has changed. Nelson talks about the 70s in his last video. He said people used to come here sit down, relax, watch the sunset, write poetries, meditate, read a book. But now people come here to stay fit, take a walk, be on the mobile phones, take a photo and check in on Instagram and Facebook. Wow. I think it was that pier that Nelson went right to the end with Bill his friend and Blackout his lovely dog I wonder how Blackout would have felt when he didn't see Nelson for a, for a long time okay um, let's go down that pier Also, 
also there are three other people that I wanted to make a special mention of in relation to Nelson obviously and those are his friends um, Dick Richards he was in a lot of his videos he was in the McDonald's video he was a very good friend of Nelson when Nelson passed away he came up to New York to possession of all his tapes just because he wanted them to be treated properly and he took them back to Atlanta uh, Atlanta or Car South Carolina can't remember so yeah he took it with them with him sorry and uh, he held on to it until uh, the early 2000s when he decided to donate it to a university you know if uh, it was someone else they would try to capitalize on it and try to make some money because it was nothing short of a national treasure but he didn't you know he did the right thing with it he donated it to the university and also started the process of transferring the footage from the VHS tapes to a digi digital format and I think uh, back in 2011 that's when his videos started appearing on uh, YouTube maybe it was that pier that Nelson went to not this one yeah, so I mean if it wasn't for Dick Richards, we wouldn't be we wouldn't have seen his videos at all. So he need to be thanked. He sadly he passed away this year. And uh, we wish that his soul rest in peace. And the other two people, David Goldman, who was uh, Dick's partner, and also a guy who really helped me out. He gave me a lot of information and he gave me permission to use Nelson's footage. And uh, Robert Coddington, Coddington, yeah that's the name. So together um, with David Goldman, they run the corporation called Good Old Dog Blackout. And they are the ones who handle all of uh, Nelson's videos. There's still some people who do the old traditional things, read a book and just uh, enjoy nature or write something. You know, yesterday I went down to do a sunset time lapse from here, but my camera. But my camera ran out of battery. I'm not very organized, am I? Well, I'll try to do it tonight. But because I'm going to do the other things, I'm not really sure if I'll make it back on time. I have to do a lot of things today. Only because I left everything to the last minute. Yesterday I was changing hotels so that took a bit of my time I wanted to come stay at Jane West Hotel um, kind of regret it because the other hotel that I was in that was in Times Square it was pretty central good location and I love that accommodation I mean I know the kind of vibe that the Jane West is uh, sorry the Jane is trying to trying to give you but if I feel that vibe or not, I'm not really sure. It's a good one-time experience, you know. It's always better to regret by doing things rather than regret by not doing things. If I hadn't come here, then I wouldn't have figured out that it's not really my thing. Maybe I'm still too young. Well, that's what I try to tell myself. So yeah, 
here because of Nelson I am here this is the first time I took a solo trip in an overseas country maybe Nelson was sitting around here no maybe not That's New Jersey on the other side. You know, I was always thinking that everyone who lived in New York, they live in Manhattan, but uh, there are other parts of New York, like the suburbs. There's, uh, or they call the boroughs, 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 something like that. Um, here, yeah, there's Bronx, there's Queens. There is, uh, I don't know, I don't really know. So how did I like New York? Yeah, I loved it. I mean, I didn't feel any of the 80s vibe at all. I mean, okay, maybe in East Village I did a bit and I met Jason who was very you know hippie kind that was quite 80s he was a very nice guy but West Village has transformed a lot as I said earlier like back in the 80s in the West Village there was a lot of uh, prostitution drug use homelessness it's all cleaned up it's a very um, cultured area with cultured people Hudson River Park supporting the LGBT community I was just checking. I walked all the way from there to here and I was wondering if I hit the record button. Thankfully I did. It must have been a total chaos back in, uh, was it 2000 when 9-11 happened? So Nelson used to walk around there and uh, point out to the Twin Towers and um, the Liberty Statue and if you recall um, that video where he's shooting with the BBC um, there's a helicopter going right above and then he says that that's Trump and uh, his wife Ivana I think So a lot of things from back then is still relevant today. Sometimes I feel that, uh, you know, like that was just another lifetime. It was 30 years ago and it was a different era altogether. I think it might have been that period where he was sitting with Bill. Hudson River is where Michael Ailey dumped uh, the body of uh, Angel, Angel Melendez, but it was, it was not from here, I think it was from Brooklyn Bridge.
tomorrow I leave New York. A bit sad. Sad because I did not achieve everything I wanted to. Well, not 100%, especially Nelson's house. I'm not happy with the footage I got from there at all. It was hard, you know. I was a bit overwhelmed, a bit anxious because someone was with me all the time. And I didn't want to like just uh, keep shooting because they were having a conversation with me. So when someone talks to you, you gotta look at them, if you know what I mean. I mean, if I didn't come from Australia, I don't think they would have allowed me in at all. And you know, they rent the, they rent the place, you know, it's them who's paying the rent, not me. So whatever, whatever was achievable, it happened. And whatever was meant to be, it happened. day today can you see the blue sky you know when there are clouds in the sky that means the sunset will be really beautiful hopefully I make it back in time to set up my camera and get the time-lapse because Nelson watched a thousand time lapse time lapses from here while he contemplated about his life although in his videos they don't uh, show a lot of, um, you know, bad things or unfortunate things, I should say. But in a subtle way here and there, you can, you know, you can sort of get that vibe. There's one video where Nelson talks to Lahoma and says how upset he was about something and he wanted to go for a long walk. And obviously, you know, RuPaul sharing the challenges that he was facing and uh, you know Christina dying of uh, drug overdose I think that that's what it was I mean they had their moments Statue of Liberty is right ahead. Maybe you can't see. I'll change to my other camera soon and zoom in a bit. But I'm going there anyway, so I'll take better footage. So yeah, that's it guys, this was Nelson's final walk and my final words on this series. I'll probably put in some footage of uh, Statue of Liberty in Ground Zero because Nelson did have a video of the Twin Towers where he took his mom and his aunt. I haven't looked at the video properly but I will probably put his video and uh, how it is now. Right, signing off from Hudson River, from the West Village, and from this pier. Thanks, guys. Thank you.